Everyone is asking the same question right now. Will AI replace psychotherapists? Chatbots can talk. ChatGPT can give you advice. They can sound empathic. They can even comfort people at 3 a.m. when no one else is there. So maybe the answer is yes. But here's what most people don't realize. Most people debating this are missing the point. They say AI can't replicate compassion or AI can't feel empathy. That sounds convincing. But what if that's not actually what psychotherapy is about? What if therapy's real aim is not compassion, not necessarily even empathy? They're important parts of the process, but therapy's real aim is something far more disruptive, something AI can't do by design. Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll see why AI might help us cope, but can't truly change us. Here's the contrast. AI can be comforting. It can generate warm, empathic words. But psychotherapy isn't about comfort. It's about change. And the way change happens in the brain is through something called prediction errors. That's the plan for this video. First, I'll show you how the brain really works as a prediction machine. Two, we'll unpack how psychotherapy creates change, not by soothing, but by disrupting those predictions. Next, we'll explore why AI as a predictive engine itself can't do this. And finally, we'll talk about the future, where AI fits and why humans remain essential. I'm Dr. Sinyon Rege, consultant, psychiatrist, and educator. Psychotherapy is a core part of my clinical practice. And as an educator, I've worked with my psychologist colleague to create a 26-hour focused psychological strategies course on the academy here. And practicing and teaching psychotherapy has taught me that psychotherapy has never just been about compassion. It's about paradox, disruption, and rewiring the brain. That's why ChatGPT or chatbots, even the best one, will never replace the human mind in therapy. So let's understand why. Here's where we start. The brain is not a camera. It doesn't just record the world. Instead, it's constantly predicting. Every sensation, every thought, every feeling you have is shaped by a model your brain is running about what comes next. When reality doesn't match the prediction, you get a prediction error. And prediction errors are how the brain learns. If something turns out better than expected, it's a positive prediction error. This results in reinforcement of that behavior. You repeat that behavior. If something turns out worse, that's a negative prediction error. It leads to avoidance and recalibration. In anxiety disorders, the brain over predicts danger. A door slams and the anxious brain predicts catastrophe. The same happens in post-traumatic stress disorder. In depression, the brain predicts futility. No matter what action you take, the expected outcome is failure or loss. In addiction, the brain over predicts reward from the drug. Even when the drug destroys, the model still insists this will feel good. Psychotherapy works by destabilizing these rigid models, what's known as core automatized predictions. These are automatic behaviors and drives. It doesn't just tell people to think differently. It creates moments where the brain's predictions fail and must be updated by the brain. That is prediction error. That is change. And in a moment, we'll break down exactly how therapy generates these prediction errors in the clinic. So how does therapy actually work? Not by comfort alone, not by advice, but by disruption. Here are some examples. A patient expects rejection, but in therapy, they find acceptance. A survivor of a traumatic event braces for harm, but instead they encounter safety. An individual with high levels of perfectionism predicts collapse if they let go, but they discover relief. Each of these is a paradox. The brain predicts one outcome, gets another. That mismatch is a prediction error. That happens, it forces the brain to update 
it's modeled. Over time, repeated prediction errors reshape how people see themselves and the world. That's why therapy is not just cognitive, it's deeply emotional, often unconscious, and always relational. Therapists use paradox, behavioral observation, and emotional language to provoke these mismatches. That's what makes therapy work. But you might say, Sunil, what about AI? Isn't it also predictive? Let's see if that's truly the case. AI is predictive too, you're right, but for a different purpose. Large language models like ChatGPT we see everywhere are predictive engines. They work by predicting the most likely next word in a sentence. That's why they sound fluent, coherent, even empathetic. So at first glance, you might think, wait, AI is doing the same thing as the brain. But here's the key difference. The brain predicts to survive. Its models are tied to hunger, fear, attachment, identity. AI predicts to cohere. It has no body, no unconscious goals, no lived stakes. It can mimic empathy, but it can't feel it. AI can generate emotional words, but it can't inhabit them. And most importantly, AI isn't built to generate paradox. It's trained to make things flow smoothly, to reduce dissonance. But therapy often works by increasing dissonance, by pointing out contradictions that patients can't necessarily see by themselves. That's where AI fails. Next, let's go even deeper. I'll show you the four specific reasons AI can't deliver real psychotherapeutic change. First, no paradox. AI is designed to be agreeable to the extent where individuals have not only gotten addicted, but has also perpetuated psychosis. But therapy often helps by doing the opposite, by highlighting paradoxes and contradictions that force the brain to update. Two, there's no unconscious access. Most human behavior is driven by unconscious goals. Therapy helps bring them into awareness. And it's this bringing into awareness that can really result in actual change. AI can only process surface level text. Third, there's no core construction of emotional language. What I mean by that is, think about a child learning sad or angry. They don't learn it from a dictionary. They learn it from an attuned caregiver who helps them link words Two feelings. In therapy, this continues. Emotional words aren't just labels. They reshape the experience itself. Think about it as emotional memories. AI can output words, but it can't co-create meaning in a relational loop to create emotional memories. It's those emotional memories of safety that take us through life and can truly change behavior. Fourth, no discernment of safety. Therapists know when to push and when to contain. That's part of clinical judgment. AI can't make those fine distinctions. Put simply, AI comforts, therapy disrupts. It's for this reason we're seeing more cases about the harm that AI can do for certain individuals. So does this mean AI has no role at all? Actually, no. Let's look at where AI does help and why the future is hybrid, not replacement. AI has real strengths. Accessibility, it's there 24 seven. No stigma, no wait lists. Structure, it can guide CBT worksheets, monitor progress and provide reminders. Third, scalability, millions can access psychoeducation instantly. For mild distress, loneliness, or as an adjunct between sessions, AI has real value, but can't deliver the central proposition of psychotherapy, addiction error, that drives transformation. And this brings us to the deeper issue. The whole debate about AI versus therapy has actually revealed something uncomfortable about how people understand psychotherapy itself. And this is very relevant for clinicians. In my view, this is where the debate around AI and therapy really misses the point. A huge part of psychotherapy is not just talking about feelings and emotions. It's about changing emotional language. Think about how a child learns the word sad, not from a dictionary, but from a caregiver's curiosity and attunement, as I mentioned earlier. You can explore this further in this video I did here. The parent notices the eyes, the ears, the presence. You're sad. 
you're angry. I can see that. That core construction of emotional language doesn't just label an internal state, it reshapes the child's experience. Why? Because language is how the brain organizes its world. And emotional language is not neutral. It's built around needs. Emotions are signals of what we need. A child gets angry because a need is unmet. The parent names it, responds, asks, and meets the need. Over time, the child builds a model. When I feel this, it might mean I need that. When I feel this, it's okay to feel this way. This is the first language we all learn. And like any first language, like your first language, it becomes automatic, deep, hard to change. Here's why it matters in therapy. Unmet needs create RPEs or reward prediction areas. Moments where the brain expected comfort but didn't get it. Those mismatches get repeated and repeated mismatches become emotional templates. I won't be cared for. I mustn't show anger. My needs are dangerous. These aren't conscious thoughts. They're felt predictions about the world. So in adulthood, when those needs resurface, they surface as emotions. The brain already knows the outcome, rejection, shame, abandonment. And so the actions follow accordingly, avoiding, hiding, controlling. Therapy works by interrupting this loop. The therapist can help the patient name the sensations, link them to the needs, hold them long enough to see they don't always end in catastrophe. That's the prediction error. A new emotional word attached to a new outcome. And over time, repeated prediction errors slowly reshape the emotional language the patient lives inside. But here's the challenge. Because emotional language is like the first language, it resists change. It's like moving to another country and being forced to learn another language. The brain resists change. You don't simply replace it with new words. It has to be experienced again and again through safe relationships until the new model embeds. That's why repetition in therapy matters and why therapy takes time. AI can generate emotional words. It can say, I understand you're sad, but it can't co-construct meaning in a live embodied relationship. It can't hold the patient's need and fear long enough for a new model to form. That's a completely different proposition. Let me simplify this through an analogy. AI is like a GPS. It always knows the most likely next turn. But psychotherapy is like walking the same street with someone who suddenly says, why do you always take this road? What if we try this alley instead? That's disruption. That's prediction error. That's how emotional language begins to shift. And that, no matter how fluent it sounds, is what AI cannot do. So let's return to the original question. Will AI replace psychotherapists? Here's what we know. AI is predictive like the brain. A therapy is about prediction error. AI gives you coherence. Therapy gives you disruption. AI can comfort you. The therapy can change you. And that difference is everything. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Check out our other videos where we break down psychiatry and psychotherapy using neuroscience, clinical cases, and real world insights. And if you're a clinician, you can join us at the Academy by Psych Scene, where we go beyond textbooks to the real art of psychiatry. I'm Dr. Sunil Regge, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video because understanding what therapy really is doesn't just change how you see AI, it changes how you see yourself. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.